Hello and welcome to Embraer TV. We are live from the Paris Air Show 2017 on day two of the action. And we have loads to look forward to today, but I want to give you an idea of the sheer scale of Embraer. This is a first for them in broadcasting live from an event, and actually it's first for the aviation industry as a whole as well. Just to give you an idea, we're broadcasting from the chalet. Behind us, we've got the static display. And if you look out over my left-hand shoulder, you'll be able to see the beautiful Legacy 450 jet. This big space here is normally filled by the big KC-390, the military cargo jet, but she's out at the moment flying over my right-hand shoulder here. We've got the runway legend, the beautiful ERJ-145, and then behind that, the showstopper, the one that everybody's talking about, the new generation E-2 with a beautiful Golden Eagle livery. So we've got loads to look forward to, everybody. We've got exclusive interviews with many of the senior executives. We've got virtual reality interaction with cockpits, cabin mock-ups, We've also got interviews with engineers, pilots, customers. We've got it. We, you name it, we've got it. And also, we'd like to remind you that this is very much your show. We want you to interact with us on Twitter using the hashtag Embraer TV. We're also on Facebook Live. Any of the clips that you like, you can then watch on YouTube. We've got highlights from yesterday's flying display when the beautiful KC-390 took to the skies and then shot shortly afterwards followed by the E2 and it really did wow the crowds you can watch that and we've got that coming up for you in a little while we've also got a roving reporter Fernando Tiberini he's out and amongst it getting in there talking to people looking at the cockpits and generally making a bit of a mischief of himself so I'm going to allow him the privilege of introducing himself right now Bienvenidos, bienvenue, welcome back to the Paris Air Show 2017. I'm Fernando Tiberini here at Embraer TV. It's another beautiful sunny day, day two Tuesday, here at Le Bourget, just outside of Paris. Today, lots of exciting things are coming up. We're going to be interviewing the ERJ Hop Quiz winners. We're going to speak into pilots. We're going to experience Embraer's all new Fleet Smart E2 Profit Hunter through virtual reality. And of course, we're going to be watching the flying displays of both the E195 E2 and the KC390. So don't forget to tune in later to catch all these features and interviews and plenty more. So we've got loads to look forward to, but before we do that, let's just have a recap of what took place here at the Paris Air Show for our Embraer TV yesterday on day one. Hello and welcome to Embraer TV. This is a first for Embraer and indeed the aviation industry as a whole itself. We are live here at the Paris 2017 Air Show. John, thanks very much for joining us. What are your expectations here at Paris? Well, this is going to be a very special year for us. Um, we have our three new platforms here, the E2, the 195E2, which is the largest aircraft Embraer has ever built the largest aircraft ever built in uh, Latin America. We have our KC-390, which is the second largest aircraft Embraer's ever built. An amazing machine. And we also have the Legacy 450 from our executive jet business. So the three business units are represented here. And of course, we have our new business unit, uh, services and support, led by Johan Bourdais. So we have four business units here. We're here in strength to meet our customers this year. Uh, it's our 40th year here and um, it's going to be very important. We have, I guess, across the business units, there's over 150 meetings set up for everyone that's here, and we're led by Paolo, so we have lots of meetings, lots of customers, and hopefully lots of deals by the end of the show. I tell you, there's a lovely saying in aviation, and that is if an aeroplane looks right, generally it is right, and there aren't many aeroplanes that look much better than that. Johan, thank you very much for joining us. Oh, thank you, Arthur. Good to be here. Beautiful weather. Oh, stunning, isn't it? Beautiful airplane. Yeah. That's Couldn't have asked for a better backdrop than this. <laughs> I know. I know. Look at this. Perfect. So, Johan, could you please start by telling us what your role is as the president of support and services? Well, if I got to summarize, it's basically make the customer happy. That's what we do every day. Two things, ensure the availability of the airplanes and also the operating cost. It needs to be as competitive as possible. That's what we do. 
So, we are here in the cabin of the brand new E195 E2, the Profit Hunter. I'm here with Captain Perini. He is pilot instructor and air safety engineer for Embraer. What can you say about the cockpit? Like, what makes it so special? Yes, for me, the, the special part of these new improvements that we have in this aircraft is the avionics. Uh, we have a four screen that you can split the screens and have all the information regarding the situation awareness for the pilot is really, really important. And in, during the phases that you have a high workload, you have all the information available for, for the pilot. And for this reason, we believe that you are improving our safety with all this information available. Now then, Rodrigo, you're in charge of marketing, and I understand that there's a whole new marketing campaign being revealed yes. with the, the new jet. Yeah, that's the, the Fleet Smart campaign. And um, I'm glad that it's being beautifully launched and uh, it looks really beautiful uh, in our chalet, in our airplanes, in our new website. So everything is running perfect. Rodrigo, could you tell us about the, the design smart, the business smart and the experience smart aspect? Yeah, that's, that's how the, uh, the fleet smart is, would say, would be uh, divided into so those, 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 yeah, yeah, in those three main pillars. We are here at the E190 E2 Virtual Reality Experience and I'm going to try it out myself. I think that was good, yeah. Oh, this is great, I can see my hands. And we're moving, great. When you're ready, pull the yoke towards you. There we go, ah, oh, this is amazing. All right. We're airborne. Fantastic. This is great. I may change career now. So here I am with the artist Quintana in front of his masterpiece. Quintana, bem-vindo. Obrigado. So I'm going to ask him what the creative challenge was in painting this livery onto an airplane. Qual foi o desafio criativo em pintar isso? É o maior desafio mesmo foi a relação a, a o tamanho da aeronave. Aquela região é uma região bastante curva. Então é isso foi o desafio. So he says the challenge was the size of the aircraft, obviously, but also the curving of the surface that he had to paint on. In the 40 years that Embraer have been coming to Paris, I'm right in saying this is the biggest presence you've ever had. For sure. I mean, even if we think about the size of our, our physical presence here, the size of our chalet, I think, is three or four times bigger than what it was two years ago at Les Bourget. Having the aircraft with us that we have this year, frankly, it's something, in a very humble way, it's something for us to be very proud of as a Brazilian company. I mean, the, just the sheer size of these aircraft that we have. And in fact, as I sit here looking at you, the aircraft that's right here over your shoulder is the 145, an aircraft where we're celebrating 20 years of service. It really was a great start to the show, and it doesn't stop there, Elia, uh, either. Earlier, I spoke to Chief Operating Officer Luis Carlos about the new E2 program. Luis, thank you very much for joining us. An uh, incredibly exciting time with the E2 generation of Jet, and I understand that you've been associated with this aeroplane perhaps longer than most. That's true, that's true. I was the, the program VP for the original um, e -jets. so since uh, 1999 until 2004 uh, which was the entry into service and now I'm I'm back for the second generation and what is it it's named the profit hunter but what is it about the aeroplane that makes it the profit hunter 
Yeah, we, we, when we launched the second generation, we decided to really optimize each of the three family members. And uh, I believe the, the best example is that we have one specific wing for each of the three models. So one bespoke wing for each of them. And that's the only uh, family in the industry that has that. So we have the ability, thanks to you know the great engineering and development teams we have uh, back in Brazil, we were able to, to invest and have uh, optimized performance for each of the planes. If you have one wing, uh, it's a compromise. It will be too small for one of the family members and too big for the, for the other. In our case, you have the best wing for each of them. And the same way, uh, specific engines, landing gears, empennages, with that, you have the best airplane uh, in each of the segments. And for the, for the E2 generation, what are the updates that we've seen to that aircraft? Well, um, we are announcing some uh, performance improvements because the flight test is progressing and we are getting uh, better results uh, than expected. And of course, we are passing this uh, along to our customers. We are announcing that. So we are announcing more range for the 195. The 195 is the biggest uh, member of the family. So we are announcing the, the range will be 2,600 nautical miles. It's 30% higher than the current generation 195. So it's a huge value for the customers, as well as a better performance for the 190 in difficult uh, airports, either short runways or high and hot runways like uh, Mexico City or Denver. So the airplane can go farther um, taking off from this uh, very difficult uh, airplane. So it means more value, more cities that the airlines can cover, more catchment area as we, as we say. So basically more value and a, a better uh, bottom line, a, a better profit for the airlines. And the E2 is currently ahead of schedule with its testing program, am I right? It so? is, it is. It's also something remarkable. Uh, our guys, I have to congratulate our teams, they're doing a, a great, great job. It's very uh, uncommon, even rare, yeah. in our industry to have programs on time. And we are absolutely on time, uh, on budget, uh, and the airplane is meeting the specs. So, great results. What is it that gives the E2 the edge over other aircraft in the single aisle narrow body? Uh, I believe, as I was saying, I believe it is it's the the most efficient uh, aircraft um, family because it's specialized uh, and because it has a, a very nice um, interior, a nice cross section, and I like to say that the two would not be so good if we didn't have the E1. So we have all the lessons learned from the current family, 20 million hours flown all around the world. So this customer intimacy, understanding the customer requirements and being able to introduce solutions that will address those requirements, uh, I believe is unique. There's no other manufacturer in, in, uh, in our segment from 70 to 130 seater that has this uh, experience that we, that we have with the current uh, generation. And what sort of challenges have you faced in the development of the E2 and how have you overcome them? Yeah, the E2, many people look at the E2 maybe because of Max and Neo, uh, which are engines that uh, are only re-engined uh, uh, platforms. Our E2 is a significantly new airplane, 75% new uh, airplane. So it is, uh, this development is as challenging as a clean sheet design. And you have all the challenges associated to that. It's, it's really, a, it's not, a, it's not a, a simple undertaking. So all the definitions, all the trade-offs, um, in an airplane there's no free lunch, if you, you cannot try to uh, uh, exceed too much in, in one uh, direction. For instance, if you put too much range to an airplane, you lose efficiency because then it becomes heavy. And so all those uh, initial trade-offs, and I believe we were extremely happy in these trade-offs. I believe we have the right range for, for our plane and the right weight 
our plane, uh, our um, E2s are the most weight efficient uh, airplanes in the segment. So if you take the weight per passenger, the E2 is the most efficient. Um, and then you have, throughout the design, you have challenges because things uh, never, not, not everything happens as planned. But w w what is important is the ability to find solution as you, mm. as you go. Uh, and uh, use the buffers, the reserves you have in terms of, uh, for instance, time. And we're being very successful mm. with that. So whatever challenges we had, uh, we were able to solve them and still keep, keep the schedule. And Lewis, you've got the E2 generation cabin mock-up here on site. Yeah. yeah. We are very pleased uh, you know, with the mock-up and with the design we achieved for the interior. Because the customers asked us for more space in the overhead bins, because of course every passenger today wants to, to have his uh, roll-on uh, bag. And um, uh, we are so happy because we managed to increase the volume by 40%, so in the E2 every passenger can take his own uh, roll-on bag without you know, making the, the cabin uh, more uh, uh, or le less spacious. And I believe this was a, a great fit. So we are showing the final design this year of the seats and the, and the overhead bins, and we are having a tremendous uh, positive feedback from the customers. So I'm very glad for this achievement. I can say I've been on the mock-up myself, and it's yeah. an incredibly comfortable place to be, actually, for such a narrow-bodied aeroplane. It's lovely. Well, Lewis, thank you very much for your time today. It was a pleasure. Thank you. And it's not just the executives that think the E2 program is a real winner. We were speaking earlier to some of the engineers who have had the privilege of working with the aeroplane. Created a brand new aircraft with focus on robustness, maintainability, and reconfiguration. We optimized the entire passenger living space by integrating the seating panels, overhead beams, passenger seats, creating a unique environment. The cargo compartment also have been modified to increase their capacity and we adding more robust panels. The entire interior has been submitted to severe and uh, several mature tests in order to have the most reliable product. The E2 is the fourth generation of flyby wire at Embraer and our third generation of full closed loop fly-by-wire. In addition to the standard fly-by-wire benefits like comfort, uh, pilot workload, reduced pilot workload, and uh, safety, of course, we are taking fly-by-wire to the next level. We are taking, we are delivering performance and few benefits, few, few savings to our customers. So the E2 delivers by design an aft shift in the CG position which translates into less drag and higher uh, capability of the airplane, better field performance and fuel performance. So with the combination of the best wing design in this class and the best use of fly-by-wire or the smarter use of fly-by-wire, it's no surprise we are delivering 10% better economics than anyone in this class. O projeto da asa de um avião, ele nasce das necessidades dos nossos clientes, das oportunidades que a gente enxerga de entregar um produto que, que crie novas oportunidades de negócio para ele e a gente traduz essas necessidades em requisitos. Aí esses requisitos, junto com toda a experiência que nós temos na concepção de aeronaves nesse mercado, com uma configuração semelhante, e o que a gente faz basicamente é uma grande quantidade de simulações tridimensionais, análises computacionais de aerodinâmica, validadas depois por ensaio em túnel, que geram, no fim das contas, um total de alguns milhares de projetos candidatos, dos quais a gente seleciona aquele um que vai resultar no melhor produto para o nosso cliente. O 175, o 190 e o 195, eles são produtos que atendem a clientes com perfis de operações que podem ser um pouco diferentes. 
E a forma que nós definimos de garantir que nós estamos entregando o melhor valor e o produto que melhor atende as necessidades de cada um desses clientes é projetando uma asa para cada um desses aviões. Day two landing gears are uh, designed and produced by a lab, which is an Embraer owned company, and taking advantage of many, many years in experience with the previous Embraer programs. We introduced all the learned lessons in the E2 design. Material selection, pr uh, surface protection, uh, good margins for repair when the gears goes for overhaul. Everything were carefully uh, introduced in the E2 design so that we could uh, meet the requirements of loads and also requirements for uh, functionalities. And the main point is the low cost for overhaul and line maintenance. Regarding brakes, uh, the landing gears are equipped with Utah's carbon discs brakes, hydraulically actuated. We are expecting around 3,000 flight cycles of wear life in average. An important thing to highlight is that we are introducing a protective coating against catalytic oxidation. Both nose and landing gears are equipped with radial tires from Michelin following a trend in the industry, so the radial tires are lighter and they last more. Embraer was an early innovator when introduced for the current E-Jets family, the AHEAD, its aircraft health monitoring system. Now, after analyzing millions and millions of flight hours, we're able to propose a fully integrated communication platform that involves, for example, the electronic flight bag, cabin management system, onboard maintenance system, and a complete portfolio of solutions that will take the aircraft operation efficiency to the next level. For the passengers, a comprehensive in-flight entertainment and connectivity system will allow a great experience, whether at work or play. It is a fact that the introduction of the e-enabled concept in the airline brings tangible gains in terms of aircraft availability, operational efficiency, and enhanced passenger experience. Well, the testing for the E2 program has been going ahead, and the aircraft is still ahead of schedule. It's due to go operate, fully operational next year. But we're going to give you a slight insight into what some of that testing involved. And here's some really quite rare footage of the aircraft being put through its paces. quite impressive, wasn't it? Have you ever seen an aeroplane surf like that? I certainly haven't. But anyway, let's focus now on the executive jet side of things. And a little earlier, I spoke to Michael Amalfitano, who is the president and CEO of the executive jet arm. Michael, thank you very much for sparing the time to come down and speak to us. Could you tell us a bit more about your role within Embraer? Absolutely. It's good to be here, Arthur. Uh, my role in Embraer just started in March. I came from the uh, global corporate aircraft finance side of the business. I'm very excited about being here at the Embraer brand, Embraer family, and uh, it's an exciting and bright future for uh, the executive jet business. So you're relatively new to the role. What skills have you had to bring into this new job? I am new to the role, but I'm not new to Embraer. I've been watching from a very close distance for many, many years. Um, the finance and business acumen is clearly the key uh, area of focus. Uh, we have to deliver not only for our customers and our employees, but most importantly right now for our shareholders. And that is the key focus of the expertise that I bring to the table. So let's talk a little bit about the, the executive jet side of things. And what is it about Embraer's executive jets that gives them the edge over there? competition. Well, it all starts with innovation. I mean, 47 years of innovation is the key for all of the brands, whether it be executive jets, defense, or commercial. And through that innovation, it allows us to engineer, design, uh, technologically advanced uh, assets in the executive jet space that provide performance, that provides characteristics of cabin and comfort, uh, that allows for us to deliver a value uh, to the customer experience. 
Can you elaborate a little bit on the design and performance of some of the jets that well, you've got? I mean, right here we got the 450, exactly. and I know you've been on it, and it's an exciting aircraft. Yeah. So you have the digital flight controls, you got a flat floor, you got flush tables, you got fit and finish, sort of timeless technology in terms of the tech panel, uh, the leathers, how uh, the wood and leathers um, and sort of uh, create an elegance in terms of the, the design of the interior. And then you have the flight performance. Uh, pilots love to fly the fly-by-wire technology. And it's the first of, of any OEM has, that has brought the fly-by-wire to that mid-light uh, and mid-size jet aircraft for both our 450 and 500. And, and for an executive jet, I understand that it's one of the only ones in the market that gives the gives the customer, the passenger, the ability to stand up. Yeah, flat, that's height. because of the flat floor. It gives you the full uh, height that you yeah. need to be able to do that. So when folks are on that aircraft, they definitely have the comfort uh, that they deserve uh, in that uh, s uh, scale aircraft. And it's, it's exciting to enhance the customer experience and uh, with very rewarding value proposition. Now, how difficult is it to produce an aeroplane that is the most advanced in its class for the mid-light? Well, it takes uh, obviously a lot of expertise from our engineering folks in San Jose, but for we live for the challenge, right? So when it comes to designing uh, this technologically advanced aircraft, Embraer lives to do that and uh, has been doing it for many years. This is not unique. We have the uh, examples of the uh, entry-level jet with the Phenom 100. That was an example of entering the marketplace uh, in that segment, and it's now been a proven jet trainer, pilot training. Um, that takes the technology statement, the Phenom 300, that's the loyalty breaker as we call it because it's the most delivered and most uh, best-selling jet in the market for four years running. And now with uh, the 450 and 500, uh, that brings cabin, performance, technology, reliability, uh, low operating costs to a segment is, uh, is very rewarding. What do you find customers are asking for in an executive jet these days? Right now it's about value. I mean, the, the key to any uh, proposition in, in uh, aviation, it's about the value. And so they're saying, what am I getting? All these aircraft can do the same thing, right? They, they, all the OEMs make good quality aircraft. Customer service, both during the sale and most importantly, after sale. That's why we have a whole business unit dedicated to customer service and support. And so the customer experience is a key criteria in regarding uh, the value, and we think that we're doing an excellent job at, uh, to deliver that today. Embraer employ a fleet smart philosophy to the way that they handle their business and their jets and their customer support. Does that apply to the executive jets as well? Well, in, in, in a way, the difference is obviously we have a lot of unique customers. So mm. think about from a business jet, you could be an owner pilot like yourself, right? Yeah. You can be a fleet operator or a charter operator. Uh, you can be a corporate flight department. So it's a very discriminating uh, high standard that you have to live, high net worth individuals. Each of these customers take a care, and so we have to apply a smart approach to delivering customer support. Is it quite a challenge to, because every single jet has to be absolutely bespoke, doesn't it? To it does. quite discerning tastes, I'd imagine. Is it quite a challenge to be able to do that? It's, it's, actually, it's a challenge, but it's exciting. It's mm -hmm. one we like to take on, and uh, Jay Beaver is a head of our design team, and he does an exciting job of creating a timeless interior where the metals and the rounded edges and the leathers and the woods all come together um, with the elegance and lifestyle that is uh, expected of the kind of customer that buys ex executive jets. So the, it's in a challenge we embrace and look forward to. Phenomenal uh, attention to detail on the airplane. Michael, thank you very much for your time. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure, Arthur. Have a great day. And you. And as I mentioned earlier, we've got one of those beautiful legacy 450s and the static display just behind me here at Paris. But let's find out now a little bit more about the luxury arm of Embraer.
really, really are beautiful aeroplanes and the attention to detail is stunning. Now, the ERJ145 is celebrating 20 years of loyal service for Embraer and Embraer's partners. And when I got the chance earlier to speak to the CEO of Embraer, Paolo Cesar, and also Monsieur Malka, who is the Executive Vice President of Hop Air France. Thank you for joining us, Monsieur Malka. Thank you very much for coming down. Hello. why do you think that the ERJ has been such a success over all these years? Well, we launched this aircraft in, uh, back in 1996, uh, after the Embraer privatization. And there was a big need at that time for a, a jet of this size. And uh, our competitor was already in the market, and we decided to, um, to go after it. And uh, then uh, we designed this aircraft, taking to, into account our client's need, of course. Right? So we went to the market, see what was uh, really the desire of the airlines to have a efficient uh, small jet. And uh, we went back, our engineers went back, uh, developed that. And then 1996, uh, this was uh, ready to go and uh, it's becoming a huge success. So uh, Regional was our very first client, uh, Regional uh, Airlines, a French company at the time. The rest of the story I'm gonna tell after. I will stop with the Regional here, but uh, just adding that at the end of the day, we have delivered more than 1,000 of these aircraft in the in the world, right? So being the U.S., North America, the largest market, but uh, was the lowest operating uh, cost aircraft. It was designed. It was meant to be a regional aircraft, different from our main uh, competitor, who had uh, based uh, this type of aircraft in their business jet. This was designed, developed certified to be a regional aircraft, so with 85,000 cycles for its uh, you know, life, so it's, a, it's great. It's a very good example of the pedigree that the new e-jets are coming from, isn't it? It's a proven performer. Absolutely, absolutely. So we understand very well the need of the regional market, the uh, regional market, regional airlines, so they fly uh, many hours a day and uh, with many cycles, very different from the other guys, uh, right in the set in the in the aviation industry, right. So uh, this type of aircraft here is about one hour, uh, a one hour flight. So a lot of uh, what touchdowns, uh, up and touchdown, up and touchdown. So it must be a robust aircraft and easy to maintain. And Mr. Malka, this is your aeroplane behind with a hot livery yes, here. <laughs> How important has it been to have that relationship with Embraer all of these years on? Well, uh, we, uh, we wanted uh, an alternative uh, to uh, the turboprop, and uh, this is a jet. So uh, it has the, the, the quality of the jet. It has also uh, uh, the, 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 the issue of the jet, which is the, the price uh, of the fuel. But uh, when the fuel price is OK, uh, this plane is uh, faster. Uh, it is a very reliable plane, very reliable, I uh, must say. Um, the comfort is uh, very good for the customers, so it was um, a perfect plane, uh, a perfect uh, plane, <coughs> sorry, for our flights, and uh, so we enjoy to, to have uh, this kind of uh, this kind of aircraft, and uh, we have 15 now. So you have 15 in yeah. your fleet, and I understand that the ERJ145 isn't the only aeroplane no. that you operate. No, no, no. Uh, we have uh, the, the total fleet uh, with Embraer is uh, 40 planes, yeah, wow. 40 aircraft. And we have also uh, ERG uh, 145, but we have also the 170 and the 190. So, uh, over the last two decades, have you found that the aeroplane's been very versatile at being, um, how do I put this, uh, it's very versatile, it's very easy to keep up with what your requirements are as an operator? Yes, well, I, I must say that uh, our requirements uh, didn't uh, change a lot. Huh? Uh, we are on the short haul flights and uh, we are always on the short haul flights. But uh, for this purpose, uh, it's uh, totally fit to this purpose. And how has um, this, how has being with a sturdy relationship with Embraer for so long made your business more profitable and successful? 
Well, f first uh, about relationships, I must say that uh, we have very good relationships with, uh, with Embraer. Uh, that makes uh, easier all the, the difficulties you can have with uh, an aircraft because you have always a lot of, uh, of issues to solve, the maintenance that we have to solve. And the relationships uh, that we built uh, all around uh, these uh, 20 years, uh, it helps a lot. It helps a lot to solve all the, the, the issues. Um, then for the, uh, the profitability, uh, as I said before, the, the need of the customer, the comfort, the, the, the speed, uh, the fact that it is a jet, uh, the reliability, uh, all these features are very important for the customer and so for us and so for our profitability of course. Paolo, how nice is it? as a, a supplier of airplanes to have such a close relationship with an operator. Oh, this is great. So, of course, Air France is a top line in the world. And uh, not only that, but I, I believe that uh, the, uh, this relationship with Brazil and France, France and Brazil, so we are very close also, right? And uh, Air France is a, is a great customer, as I said, a top airline. Uh, they are very demanding in a good sense, which is very good to us because it helps us also to always raise the bar, right, and serve better our customer, understanding more their needs, because their success is going to be our success. It's not vice versa. So it's their success first is going to be our success. So we are always looking to that to be more efficient to develop uh, not only products but services also that will will achieve the, their targets. So for us as a manufacturer. There is not, uh, nothing else better than having a repeating order from your uh, right client. And we have been uh, supplying Air France for many, many years with, uh, with the Brasilia first, with the Brasilia, right? And then uh, with, the, with the Jets, the RJ145, and now with the E-Jets. And Mr. Malcolm, what does the future look like for your relationship with Embraer? We will see. Yeah. <laughs> we will negotiate in a minute. <laughs> well, the, the future, of course, we have, uh, as I said, uh, 40 uh, aircraft uh, of Embraer. So uh, uh, our relationship is built for a long time. And uh, perhaps we will have more. Yeah. <laughs> Important to mention in this regard that uh, Air France KLM Group they have 75 yeah. Embraers, uh, so it's, a, it's, it's the largest out. fleet in Europe, yeah. right? And we are very eager, very eager. It's very good. Very proud. Paolo Cizal, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Monsieur Malka, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we're going to take a break now and we'll join you a little bit later on. But you don't want to miss us. I think, as you can hear, the fighter jets have come out to play. So, later on this afternoon, we're going to be speaking to some of the winners of a Hot Air France quiz that took place. And they won some tickets to be here at Paris, all ten of them. And we're going to speak to them a little bit later on. So you're not going to want to miss it. We'll see you soon.